So the second law, why is it called the mother law? We shall see kwamba the first law and the third law are actually part of the second law. Ko sec first law na na third law ni 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 ni, ni namna tofauti tu ya kuistate second law. So ukija kuangalia hizi law zote ni kama ziko ndani ya law ya pili. Law ya pili ndo law ambayo ni mama ambayo tunaweza tukaangalia law ya kwanza inatokanaje na law ya pili na law ya tatu inatokanaje na law ya pili. Tu tukianza na first law Eh, tunajua kwamba force ziko to mass times acceleration as according to the second law as according to the second law it says that eventually force ziko to mass times acceleration i hope you remember this kwamba rate of change of momentum which is m v minus u over t is equal to force i hope you remember that this is acceleration so mass times acceleration is where this has come from so the second law F is equal to MA. So given that the second law F is equal to MA. So according to the first law it says unless it is affected by external force. So this force in the second law they are speaking about is the external force, okay? Force applied is the external force. So if F is zero according to the first law, if F is zero, if F is zero, external force is zero. You can see from here that if f is zero acceleration will also be zero because mass is a constant uh, number we know that a is equal to it will be zero divided by mass so eventually acceleration will be zero so what does this mean if acceleration is zero it means there is no change in velocity so there are only two conditions when there is no change in velocity it's either that final velocity is equal to initial velocity because acceleration is equal to v minus u over t so it's either the final velocity and the initial velocity are the same. So V minus U becomes zero because they are the same. That's the first case. Or the second case, it's either it is at rest. The body is at rest. When it is at rest, it means initial final they are zero because it, it is not moving. So come on, zero in a core acceleration is zero. So two cases, above V is equal to U or the body is at rest. So to kiangalia easy conditions, oh, is not rudisha konye first law tumeona tumejipataje kulingana second law when the body is at rest it maintains its state of rest when it is moving in a uniform motion provided that f is equal to zero no external force so this shows that first law is actually contained in the second law so tukija kwenye second kwenye third law na yenyewe tunaweza tukaona kwamba assume kwamba these are the two bodies okay these are the two bodies one exerts action FAB is the action and FBA is the reaction. This is force of A on B, A in, on B, and this is force of B on A, the reaction. So we know that FAB should be equal to negative FBA, okay? These two forces are equal and opposite. That's why the negative sign there. So we know that speaking of momentum, Okay, speaking of momentum, uh, if force is equal to change in momentum, rate of change in momentum divided by change in time, we know this. Okay, we know this because momentum is mv minus u. Okay, so divided by the rate of change of momentum. So we know change of momentum is equal to force times time which is in other words we call it impulse okay so impulse of a b the momentum the change in momentum of a b is equal to f a times t the momentum of b a is f b a times t so for each force we find the momentum so if summation of momentum is equal to this momentum plus this momentum so we'll come to realize that if we take the summation of momentum the summation of momentum which is equal to the momentum due to the action okay momentum due to the action minus because they are opposite when whenever they are opposite vector one of them should be assigned negative okay so if we take fab the opposite will be assigned to uh, to subtract kitafuta summation or resultant Whenever there are two vectors, when one is in opposite direction to the other, 
tuna difference yao summation tunaitafuta kwa kutoa so tunachukua fab kutoa the force which is opposing but remember the force which is opposing is negative fb a times t so minus minus becomes plus here so umeelewa naomba nirudie unapokuwa una vector mbili sawa so, unapokuwa una vectors mbili moja in act juu labda nyingine in act oppositely so this is vector a and this is vector b so if we want to find the resultant here if we want to find the resultant we usually take a minus b au b minus a either way lakini tunafanyaje tunatoa so tukichukua action the impulse kwa sababu momentum ni vector tukichukua momentum due to ab tutatoa momentum due to the opposite momentum ambao opposite momentum ni negative fab times time so minus minus becomes plus i hope so, so it is clear so this is the summation of the the summation of the forces okay so if there is no external force if there is no external force if there is no external force then it means the summation should be equal to zero because externally there is no force okay because externally there is no force automatically if the summation of momentum should be equal to zero as long as there is no external force okay as long as there is no external force summation of momentum should be equal to zero therefore zero is equal to f a b t plus f b a times t so eventually you come to realize that if a, a b t f a b t if you take one to the other side uh, times t times t so eventually t and t will cancel so remain with f a b is equal to negative fba so you will come to realize that this is the the third law proved from the second law again okay so that way we have proved that the second law is actually the mother of all laws so also to prove further this law is really the the mother of all laws it also can prove the law of conservation of linear momentum I believe you, you you remember that the law of conservation of linear momentum first ilikuwa in a state kwamba if two if two or more bodies act upon one another they collide if two or more bodies suppose this is body 1 this is body 2 they go against each other they collide the total momentum before collision is equal to the total momentum after collision so momentum before collision collision is equal to momentum after after collision we shall see this mbele so this is what we are going to prove from the second law that if suppose we have the first body a ball moving against the wall sawa so, inavyokuja kwenye wall ika collide at this instant hapa ime collide sawa so, remember kwamba ilikuja ikiwa na velocity u before collision after collision the velocity was v okay it was rebounding its velocity ilidunda ikarudi na velocity v so we remember according to the third law sawa so, hapa kutatokea na action and reaction when they collide action na, na reaction action na, na reaction so this ball will exert an action fb force due to the ball and the wall will exit an opposite equal reaction which is fw force of the wall so uh, if fb is equal to negative fw uh, therefore the momentum according to the second law these forces are momentums okay change in momentum these forces ni momentum is it? so according to the ball inakuwa ni hivyo and for the wall inakuwa ni hivyo but since the wall is constantly at rest okay constantly at rest so v na u inakuwa the same so they cancel and this becomes zero okay this becomes zero so we remain with this so if we take this time there times time times time so we come to realize that mb times v ukiingiza ndani minus mb u is equal to this is mb ni initial sawa so, ni ni, su, ni subscript sawa so, ni ka number tukachini ka elufi sio sio value na hii so mb v minus m 
a mass of the ball okay mass of the ball u is equal to zero so finally if you take that side you come to realize mbv is equal to mbu so this shows that momentum before collision is equal to the momentum after collision okay when there is no external force remember the condition is that when there is no external force and is that's what the law of conservation of momentum is telling us that under and uh, isolated condition when there is no external force then momentum before collision and after collision must be equal so going back going back to the basics sawa going back to the going back to the basics bado tunakumbushia kumbushia vile vitu ambavyo tunafahamu tunakumbuka second law of motion inatuambia nini specifically unajua tumeisoma lakini ukiangalia kwa umakini na kujiuliza hii law hii law inamaanisha nini yani practically ikoje okay ni hivi kwa mfano unapokuwa wewe kuna boxi sawa kuna boxi kwenye floor unataka ulisukume usogeze labda kuna kitu kimeingia chini ya boxi unataka ukitoe sawa wewe utatumia nguvu zako nyingi sana labda 100 newton sawa ita push ili box litasogea na litahamia say this position hapa litakuwa lime limeondoka okay remember ku remove paka hapa mpaka hapa according to the second law of newton there is force is equal to mass times acceleration so as long as we apply force you have caused an acceleration because it will at rest it may accelerate to a certain velocity mpaka ime fika lakini swali je yeah, force iliyofanya acceleration hapa au sure ni 100 newton yote ambayo wewe umetoa kwenye mwili wako Then Newton anatuambia hivi kwamba this force which causes acceleration is the net or resultant force acting on that body in the direction of motion okay is the resultant or the net force out of many forces that will be acting when you box so the resultant how the net force into the direction of the acceleration hiyo ndio itakuwa ime cause nini acceleration so kwa mfano ili box inaweza kuwa na friction friction na opposed motion labda kwa 80 Newton friction na offer opposition ya 8 newton static friction okay na resist motion so 100 newton zako ukitoa na 20 na 80 zinabaki 20 tu hizi 20 ndio zina cause acceleration kwa hapa acceleration itakuwa ni sawa mass times acceleration kwa na sawa na hiyo 20 na sio 100 ambayo wewe ulikuwa unatumia kusukumia box so hicho ni kitu ambacho ni interesting nataka wewe ujifunze sasa kwa mfano tuna hichi kitu hapa so we have f acting there and we have fr acting the opposite direction okay fr is the friction force so you remember from the o level knowledge kwamba coefficient of friction either static or dynamic is equal to the friction force of a normal reaction where the normal reaction is the weight of the box mg so finally friction force will always be is equal to the perpendicular okay should be perpendicular to the surface the the, the force perpendicular to the surface this is very important the force perpendicular to the surface tutaona baadaye kwenye inclined plane so remember force ambayo tunatumia reaction ambayo tunatumia ni ile ambayo iko perpendicular to the surface so the force ambayo tunatumia the force ambayo tunatumia should be the, the, the reaction ambayo tunatumia should be the force which is perpendicular okay which forms 90 degrees with the with the surface narudia kwa sababu ni muhimu sawa reaction tunaoongelea hapa ni force au weight au component ya weight nzache wewe kama kuna angle weight na act kwenye angle ile component ile tukirisolve tuona resolving wanake hapo ile component ambayo itakuwa perpendicular lazima tutafute component ya weight au kama ni weight yenyewe lazima iwe pep, ili kuiita reaction ambayo tutaitumia kutafutia friction lazima iwe perpendicular to the surface kwa lazima perpendicular to the surface okay kama weight ingekuwa inactive at an angle tungetafutia component yake ambayo inact perpendicular hiyo ndio tunayotumia kama reaction okay but just remember kwamba coefficient of friction times reaction for a simple case kama hii is equal to um, hiyo so eventually here acceleration will be caused by f minus f ara friction force is equal to mass times acceleration so to make it even uh, sound uh, better 
f minus coefficient of friction times mass times gravity okay because this is the friction force so what is resultant nimeongelea sana hapa oh resultant mara resultant resultant kaenda karudi so what is resultant resultant is one single force one single force that can replace all forces acting on on a body and will still produce the same effect okay resultant resultant force resultant force is a single force is a single force the resultant is a single force which can replace which can replace all the forces acting on the body is a single force which can replace all the forces acting on a single body which is subjected to many forces is a single force which can replace all the forces acting on a body subjected to all those many forces so this one force will still produce the same effect okay will still reproduce the same effect this is what we call this force is what we call the resultant force so that single force which can replace all the forces acting on a body and still produce the same effect kama zile zote zingekuepo hiyo ndo tunaita resultant so kwa mfano kwa simple case kama hii hapa resultant 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 ni sawa na f minus fr okay f minus fr is equal to resultant So you can see kwa mfano ule mfano leo toa kama hii ni 100 kama hii ni 80 ukichukua 100 ukaact huko 80 ukaact huko unapata effect itakuwa cause acceleration hapo ni 20 peke yake ni sawa sawa na ukitoa hizi ukazitoa ukazitoa hizi then ukatumia tu force ya 20 newton kukawa hamna friction hamna force applied uka apply tu force ya 20 newton hiyo ndo tunaita resultant because this 20 newton in such in those conditions ambapo umeondoa forces zingine zote zinazo oppose zinazo ambazo hazi oppose zikabaki yenyewe tu ina produce the same effect kama huyu angekuepo huko na huko angeact the opposite direction then huyu 20 ndo tunamuita resultant force so resolution of vector pia ni kitu ambacho ni muhimu sana as long as this topic is concerned lakini resolve, resolving vector maana yake nini? Tunakumbuka resolution of vector usiogope, nishaanza kuona wengine sawa shaanza kuogopa. Oh, resolution of vector ilikuwa ngumu from 3 si na nini? Ah, usiogope. Tunaenda taratibu na utaelewa hata usiofu. So resolution of vector means splitting of a force acting at an angle into vertical and horizontal components. So resolving vector means the splitting the splitting of forces into vertical and horizontal components splitting of the forces especially when they are acting at an angle uh, we, we 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 split them into horizontal and vertical components so if it so happens that's when we are going to call it resolving vector kwa mfano kwa mfano tuna flow wewe ukawa una press the floor lakini force yako nayo i press ina act at an angle of 40 degrees okay so tuta split e force into horizontal na vertical okay so tutakuwa na sasa nataka uangalie hapa kwa makini tunavyo resolve vector tunavyo resolve vector tunafuata hii direction ya direction ya huu mshale kwa ni sawa sawa tunaiami kwa sababu vertical axis ni hapa okay na horizontal axis ni hapa kwa tuna split force into vertical component na horizontal component sasa sio tu kitendo cha kusema ah, okay naamisha tu hapo naamisha huko ah, ah no sio hivyo okay sio hivyo lazima uangalie kwamba direction ya force yangu ilikuwa hizi ni vector direction ni very very important okay ndo uzuri wa vector au ubaya wake 
kwamba lazima u consider direction otherwise utapoteza maana nzima ya swali okay so tunapo resolve nataka ufanye hivi huu wote assume kama unausimamisha so kama unaupeleka hapo huu mshale unaupeleka that way so huu kiuleta vertical utaona wenyewe una act una act chini okay una act chini similarly ukiupeleka horizontal ukiuleta horizontal utaona ukiulaza huu mshale hapo una act kuelekea huko so eventually kumbe tuna diagram yetu ambayo ina inaenda hivyo si ndio kwa tuna diagram yetu ambayo inafanana namna hiyo so kumbe umeona hii direction ina mata sana muhimu sana nataka ujue hicho kwamba direction ya hiyo force ina mata sana kwa kama una force ina act huko nataka unavyopeleka kwenye vertical hama nao mshale kabisa sema na upeleka vertically ukihamisha huu mshale ukiusimamisha hapa utaona kwamba mshale una una move una move mpaka eventually unasimama hivi okay na ukiuleta mshale kwenye horizontal utaona una move una move mpaka mshale una so hichi kichwa kinabidi kiwe maintained hapa hapa kisi move sawa so utakuja kuona kwamba that moves that direction so kichwa cha huyu kwenye mkia wa huyu then our result nitakuwa inaenda huko kama unavyoona result nitakuwa inaenda huko so that's what we call resolution of vector now the next task the next the next task ni kujiuliza then is value is value zinakuwaje because value ya horizontal component value ya vertical component then inakuwa ni ngapi sasa tumetoa mfano that we are having that force tumeshasema resultant yake tukiupeleka vertically unakuja hapo okay so kwa vile tumeshachora hivi then tukiupeleka horizontally tutaona inakuja hivi si ndio inakuja hivi the head of one should be at the tail of the other so baada ya kuandika huko chini tunaoandika huko juu ili ku maintain direction resultant yetu si kama umenielewa mm, i hope sijawachanganya so my interest was this angle here so as we have seen that we are having that force there at an angle of 40 so we will have our vertical component and we will have our horizontal component we will have our vertical component and our horizontal component okay so what does mathematics tell us okay what does mathematics tell us mathematics zinatuambia tuchole vizuri mchoro because here we will have like a triangle okay we we'll have a triangle for resultant and we have the horizontal force acting that way and the vertical force acting downwards my intention is to maintain that triangle there so we have the 40 degrees there the vertical component and the horizontal component okay so mathematics tell us we know that this is the opposite this is the opposite this is the adjacent and this is the hypotenuse so if we want because we want to find our vertical and horizontal in terms of the resultant sawa kwa sababu mara nyingi tunapewa hii force na bitu we resolve kwenye vertical na horizontal kwa mfano hapa tumesema normal reaction lazima iwe perpendicular to the surface sasa kama force ilikuwa ina act kama weight ilikuwa ina act at an angle 40 lazima tutafutie component ambayo iko perpendicular ambayo ndio hii vertical component so tutaitoa wapi tutaipata kutokana na hypotenuse tunaipataje ha, tukicompare opposite na hypotenuse sawa so, tunatumia nini opposite ndio pote tunatumia sin 40 tukitumia sin 40 is equal to opposite which is the vertical component of hypotenuse okay hypotenuse which is the resultant okay resultant so we will find that v is equal to resultant sin sin 40 okay so we'll come to realize that v is equal to resultant sin 40 similarly If we come to find the horizontal which is the adjacent tunatumia cos so cos 
is equal to adjacent which is the horizontal over hypotenuse which is the resultant so the horizontal is equal to resultant cos 40 there is something you will notice here okay that if the angle is there to kija kwenye horizontal tuna cross okay tuna cross e angle tuna cross e angle tuna cross tukija kwenye horizontal tuna cross e angle usimuone tukija kwenye horizontal tuna cross e angle tukija kwenye horizontal tuna cross e angle so cross tunatumia cos hiyo ni njia tu ya kukariri sawa so ili usisumbuke kufanya mahesabu mengi sawa kwenye kwenye horizontal component tuna cross okay kwenye horizontal sio usamani sio kwenye horizontal kwa sababu angle ikibadilika inabadili maana sawa angle ikibadilika inabadili maana kabisa nacho maanisha kama hiyo component tuna cross angle tuna cross angle tunatumia cos kama tunaona hapa kuja kwenye horizontal tume cross angle okay tume cross kwa kama tume cross tunatumia h cos 40 kwa h ambao resultant cos 40 tunapata the horizontal component kwa sababu horizontal component tume cross hiyo angle kuja kwenye horizontal component why to move away to move away from the angle to move away from the angle hapa to move away from the angle away from the angle kuja kuinyosha kupata vertical ku move away from the angle tunakuja kutumia sin so tutakuja kutumia h sin 40 so remember across tunatumia cos tutaiona vizuri hapa so to move across the angle tunatumia cos to move away from the angle tunatumia sin okay so the point here is usikariri usikariri narudia tena narudia tena kama u, wewe sio mpenda hesabu na una tabia ya kukariri kwamba horizontal component tunatumia cos vertical component tunatumia sin waache hiyo tabia kwa sababu angle ikibadilika inakuwa ni, ni msala umeona tumesema e force iko hivi tukimove move au tutumie ile ile triangle tuliyokuwa nayo hii ni 40 hii ni resultant Okay, hii ni vertical, hii ni, ni horizontal. Engo ikiwa hapa. Sawa? Engo ikiwa hapa. Huyu atakuwa cos 40. H cos 40. Sawa? Tuna move across. Huyu tuna move away. Sawa? It means huyu eventually atakuwa V sin R. I mean horizontal hapa atakuwa r cos theta. Huyu atakuwa r sin 40. Okay? Sasa bala angle ikihamishwa. Angle ikihamishwa. Angle ikihamishwa inabadilisha maana kabisa. Okay? Angle ikihamishwa inabadilisha maana kabisa. Angle ikiwa hapa. Mambo yanakuwa tofauti kwa sababu hii utaona kuja kwenye ho, kwenye vertical ndio inakuwa across so ina move across the angle across across the angle so vertical ndio itakuwa ni r cos 40 alafu the other one it means itakuwa ni sin 30 so horizontal itakuwa ni r sin Natumia theta. Sawa usi yu kafikini mesema 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Ni theta na maanisha. So for this case, theta ni, ni, ni 40. So meona tofauti. Engo ikibadiliki na badili maana. So just remember kwa mba ukimuvu across natumia cos. Away natumia sign. So it will depend na engo iko api. Sio kwa mba ni constantly horizontal. Zinakuwa na cos. Vertical zinakuwa na sign ya pana. Sio icho kitu. Ita depend na position ya engo. So unaomba we makini we. So kwa mfano kama ni ili box unalivuta. Sawa? Unalivuta. Unalivuta na force F. Tofauti na hapa ilikuwa vertical. Ukilizove any force ambayo iko vertical au horizontal inabaki tu na component hiyo hiyo ambayo ilikuwa inact. Kama force iko vertical uwezo ukailizove kwenda horizontal sub the angle is 90. Na ukitafuta eh ukilizove unakuja kupata ni ni 0. 
okay nakuja kupata ni zero uh, so when the angles are vertically au horizontal au hatu to resolve so kwa mfano this time tunavuta box lakini for sisi tumeelekeza at an angle theta from the horizontal so tunakuja kuona kumbe ile box ni sawa sawa linavutwa na force mbili ndio maana sometimes ukivuta hivi box linakuwa linanyenyuka na linaenda mbele okay sometimes linanyenyuka na linaenda mbele kwa sababu kuivuta tan angle ni sawa sawa kuna horizontal component na vertical component sawa just remember kwamba tukirisolve tukaipeleka hapo tunapata vertical component umeona ukipeleka huo mshale ukaonyosha hapo unaona geukea juu na ukiulaza huo mshale horizontal utaona unaelekea kulia so eventually eventually horizontal component horizontal component itakuwa ndio ina move across okay kwa lengo ambalo tumepewa ndio itakuwa ina move across so horizontal component tunatumia f cos theta kwa sababu tuna move across okay across tunatumia cos so f cos theta hapo ndio itakuwa horizontal component lakini the sign we move away so itakuwa f sin theta so nilikwambia pale kuhusu direction si mshale mkia wa huyu inabidi uanze kwa don't worry sawa ukipewa tu force kwa sababu kuna njia nyingi za kutafuta resultant kuna ile parallelogram law triangular law course of sio sio muhimu sana kuzijua zile law cha muhimu ni unielewe tu namna ya ku resolve hapa kwao tu kirisolve tumesema tunaipeleka horizontally na vertically okay so horizontally ukiulaza umshale utaona unaenda huko vertically ukiulaza umshale utaona unaelekea huko so usianze kuogopa kwamba okay ikitokea kwamba huu mkia mkia na mshale mkia mkia wa uso na mkia wa huyu horizontal ame collide na kichwa cha huyu vertical so eventually resultant itakuwa the line joining the two the two ends lakini kama ungeamua kucholea eh, kama kwa mfano ingekuwa ni hivi ukilizovu inaenda juu so na unauleta vertical mshale unageukea juu ukiuleta horizontal mshale unageukea huko so utaona kichwa m, kichwa ki, na mkia havijaungana kichwa cha huyu mmoja na kichwa cha huyu mwingine na mkia huyu mwingine havijaungana ni mkia na mkia ukiona mkia na mkia unatokea parallelogram law it means resultant itapita katikati yao resultant itapita katikati yao so just remember ni in case wakikuuliza directions za force baadaye tutaona kuna maswali fulani sometimes wanaweza kuuliza na utaji direction ya resultant so sio of cha muhimu hapa ni kwamba wewe umenielewa maana ya resultant maana ya kurisolve umekumbuka friction jinsi ya kupata na vingine vingi so tunaweza tukaona kwamba ikitokea ikitokea hii kesi hapa second law anatuambia force ziko tu mass times acceleration. Na tumesha sema hii force ni resultant. Sio tu force moja ambayo inaenda mbele basi kwa vile gari inaenda mbele basi ndio hiyo ina cause acceleration no resultant. Kwa mfano hapa, tunaangalia ili gari au ili box linaenda horizontally. So force zinazohusika tu hapo ni horizontal. Hii vertical itahusika lakini vertical itahusika kivipi? Itahusika kwa sababu ina contribute kwenye horizontal kwa sababu ina cause friction. Sawa? Ina cause friction kwa utakuja kuona kwamba hapa resultant kwa vile inaenda mbele itakuwa ni f cos theta minus friction si ndio ina oppose is equal to mass times acceleration muone lakini the interesting thing hapa ni kwamba friction ni nini friction tumesha sema ni sawa sana normal reaction times coefficient of, of, of friction lakini normal reaction hapa ni nini tunajua weight na act chini sawa well and good weight na act chini hapo weight na act chini lakini kumbuka kuna hii component na act juu kuna hii component na act juu f sin theta so eventually basi kumbe hapo huyu weight atakuwa anapunguzwa na huyu hapo kwa sababu huyu ana oppose so eventually normal reaction itakuwa ni weight mg mg minus the upward component the vertical component ambayo ni f sin theta 
So ukipata hapa value hii ndio itakuwa reaction. Kwa ndo utaiweka hapa reaction ta multiply na hii ndio itakuwa e friction hapa. So minus zero na cause acceleration. Hizi ni basics tu sawa. Tumeona inaanza kuwa interesting kidogo. Eh, Newton's laws of motion za huko na So hivi ndio utakavyo wenda kwa tuna deal navyo na usiofu things are arranged in a clear way, concise manner. You'll understand.